Now, I'm not a gambling man, but I would say Sharon will be lambing here within the next half an hour. You gonna have some babies? Well, I just put the tractor away. I went over and tried to move the shit pile. It's still frozen solid. I just assumed, incorrectly obviously, that uh, manure pile would just turn into compost just through natural self-heating kind of all year long. But I guess when you get minus 35 in the wintertime, these things will freeze right to the core. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more homework on composting and, and manure piles and see if there's maybe something different we can do or Snack time. Oh, baby's even having a little snack of hay. How cute. Well, I better come get my wheelbarrow out of the mud over here. What a mess this is. Put, had it stacked up nicely against the, straw, or the shed here. I was moving these uh, mulch piles. I don't know if the chickens knocked it over or what, but then it froze in. So. Well, that's a good thing I'm not a gambling man. It's now six o'clock the following morning. And there was nothing at uh, 2.30 in the morning when I went out to check everybody. So I guess Sharon, you win this time. So if you saw our p Facebook post last night, uh, we did come up with a name for these guys. So we have Flossie, she's at the teat right now. And then at the side there, the big boy, that's Morkum. And then back here is Edith. I'll leave them to acclimatize, get the heat lamps off. They can acclimatize to the outside temperature for most of the day. And then later this evening, we'll put them back with the rest of the flock. So a question came in on our Facebook page uh, just before one o'clock in the morning. Why do we name our food? So. Kind of a kind of a fun question. Um, while we're here on the farm, they're they're not food yet, right? They're they're a living, breathing, functioning part of the farm, and each one of them has character, and so so it's important to give them a name. And then obviously there is a time comes when they do become food, and that's that's a difficult time for sure. But we have a, a good understanding. That, I mean, they're not pets, right? They they are raised for a purpose. So the girls raised for breeding stock. They get an actual human name. They're named after old ladies. And the boys, they're either raised for uh, external breeding stock, so they're leaving the farm, or butchering stock. And so uh, they're actually named after British towns, villages, or cities. And there's not really a good, good reason why I chose to do this, other than, you know, I guess maybe just a little bit eccentric. I'd see these guys are ready to get out. Come on, girls. Go frolic. They're too fat to frolic now. So as you can see over here, we've got three hay bales. And there's one over by the horse pen. So four hay bales left. It'd be really awesome if we could just feed those and have lots of green grass by then. We won't have to get any more feed up here. So it's time to go feed the chickens. You'll recall from previous videos that uh, we want these chickens to do some work. Now you can see out in front of the chicken house, they do lots of digging and scratching where things are open. Now we want them to kind of stop digging and scratching in front of the chicken house because we're going to plant grass here. What we do want them to do is go behind the chicken house to all these mulch piles and spread this around. So we're gonna actually put some food out on the mulch piles and get them to dig it up. So the chickens won't actually get any, oh Jesus, muddy here. They won't get any food inside their chicken house uh, as long as the weather holds up, uh, probably right up until fall now. So there's really no reason for it. Um, we can set these guys to work outside and I'll encourage them to go uh, forage during the summer and get lots of Lots of fresh greens, 
And that's gonna make for some fantastically tasty eggs. If you wanna see some fermentation happening, this is a pail that I mixed up four days ago. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a stir. If you can see that or not. Poor lighting. So this actually, there's some mixed information on the internet about whether or not to add apple cider vinegar to your fermented foods. So in this particular pail, I did add apple cider vinegar to see what it would do. And it looks like it is doing exactly what we expect it to do. Um, accelerating that fermentation process, releasing a lot of nutrients. So this may be something that we continue to experiment with. Heading back to the shop. Left my gloves in there. I got a bad habit. I must have like 50 pairs of gloves. I just leave them everywhere. Hopeless. I'd say the lambs are adjusting nicely to being outside. They're loving life over here on the on the bedding pile. Yeah, the little baby lambs will go meet some ponies. <laughs> 